Welcome to my guide on getting the fastest clue scrolls in old school RuneScape. In this guide I will be covering what monsters you should kill for the fastest easy, medium, hard and elite clue scrolls. This should also help you if you're looking to bag yourself one of the new master clue scrolls. This is done by trading one of each type of lower clue to Watson and Zaya. If you know what type of clue you would like to see, please click it on the screen now. The first way of getting easy clues is by pickpocketing hand members. Now this is probably the most popular way of getting easy clue scrolls in the game. You see a lot of people down here doing it. Um, it's a 1 in 50 chance so it's pretty quick if you have a high thieving level. Personally I don't like it as I don't like having to drop all the junk. I would much rather just kill something than have to keep pickpocketing and dropping stuff. But it is the most popular way. Next on the list for easy clue scrolls are level 2 men. The best place to kill these is in the barn just north of Edgeville Bank. There's around 7 of them and you can rotate round just one hitting them quite easily and you'll get about 15 to 18 kills per minute. It's a 1 in 100 chance. I couldn't find any official data on the drop rate so I, um, I killed a thousand of them as a small sample and I got 10 clue scrolls. So I think 1 in 100 chance is pretty fair. The barn is also located conveniently next to a teleport spot so you can get there really easily and they'll drop quite a lot of good herbs. I made around 250 to 300k per hour killing these so that's really good when you consider it. And now we move on to my favourite way of getting easy clue scrolls. These are level 10 thugs. You can find them in the wilderness part of Edgeville Dungeon. You don't need to worry about PKs too much as it's only level 2 wilderness. So the chance of actually anyone being able to attack you is pretty low. It's quite AFK as well because they're aggressive so you can just turn auto retaliate on and let, um, let them do the rest. They drop a lot of herbs and runes. It's also close to the bank and telly spot. You just need to run through the dungeon a short way. And finally for easy clue scrolls we have the gourmet implings. These can be found at Puro Puro or bought from other players. It's 1 in 25 chance and they're pretty common so they're a good way of getting clues. Everything else you'll get from them is pretty much junk so clues are the only notable drop. So now we move on to medium clue scrolls. The way that everyone gets these pretty much is Falador guards. Um, if you've done the Falador Medium Diary, you get an extra 20% boost in receiving clue scrolls. So that brings it down to a 1 in 102 chance of receiving a clue scroll from the guards. It's, uh, it's close to a bank, it's close to a teleport spot, and best of all, you can use a cannon. So you can attack multiple guards at once. So even though a 1 in 102 chance seems pretty high, you get through them uh, fairly quickly as you're using the cannon as well. So next up we have Eclectic Implings, they're not called Electric Implings as I thought they were for the last 6 or 7 years. Um, same as Gourmet Implings really, 1 in 25 chance. Uh, you can buy them from other players or uh, catch them at Puro Puro. Um, you can spawn catch them, so basically what you do is you stand next to a spawn spot and as soon as they appear just catch them like I'm doing now on screen and it's pretty quick. I think they're worth about 6k each at the minute so you can even make quite a lot of money from this. I've heard people saying it's up to uh, almost 2 mil an hour just for level 50 hunter. So that's pretty overpowered. Obviously prices may change, well they probably will change, but it's a good method. So to begin with hard clue scrolls we have hellhounds. There's not much to say about these apart from they're really quick. It's a 1 in 32 chance when we're in a ring of wealth in Bjorn in the wilderness. The downsides are is it's deep wilderness and they don't really have any good secondary drops. They only drop bones and a smouldering stone. The smouldering stone is a 1 in 32,000 chance and as far as I'm aware at the minute it's worth about 600k so that's not even really worth it. Um, be careful with PKers, it's best just to bring free items in case anyone does come along but it is close to the teleport lever as well so you can you can escape. And now we move on to Green Dragons. It's a 1 in 64 chance with a Ring of Wealth imbued in the wilderness. They're really fast to get to, really quick to kill, and they've got obviously good secondary loot, such as Green Dragon hides and bones. Good for uh, mid-level players that are looking to make some cash, and also if you have the Wilderness Elite Diaries done, 
all the bones are noted, which helps out a lot. It is in mid-level wilderness, but as long as you don't go AFK, you can get away from most PKers. If you have a glory equipped, you can teleport out of up to level 30 wilderness. So just to prove how easy it is to get away from PKers here, uh, when I was out there, a couple did come over. Um, all you've got to do really is just stay attacking the dragons and they can't get you. Obviously I could teleport out at any moment, but just for the sake of the video, I'm going to... Um, play with them a little bit and drag them around um, a lot of the times the dragons will attack them as well um, the only time you have got a problem with is like a big team and they can tag all the dragons but yeah just uh, running around a little bit obviously they can't attack me they then start trying to PJ the dragons away um, but it doesn't really work I just teleport out in the end This next method is fairly new. It was discovered along with the release of the catacombs on Zaya. What you're doing is you're barraging or using the highest multi-combat magic spell on these warp jellies. It's a 1 in 64 chance of receiving a clue scroll, so it's really quick and obviously it's great magic XP. It's going to build up over time if you're hunting clues. The only downsides are the cost and you need quite a lot of high levels as well. Obviously barrage is 94 magic. I can't do that so I'm cheapskating it with burst. But basically, good gear and good levels is what you need to do this efficiently. Finally, for hard clues, we have Ninja Inklings. Same as Gourmet and Eclectic Inklings, it's a 1 in 25 chance. I didn't include Magpie Inklings because they were a 1 in 50 chance. And at the minute, they're around 40k each, so I don't really consider them worth it. But if prices change, they may become worth it. Um, Ninja Inklings, can't really find them at Puro Puro too often. I was there for an hour and I found one. They are sort of getting uh, on the rare side of things towards Dragon now. Um, you're better off buying them from the Grand Exchange, but 1 in 25 chance. It's not too bad for what you pay for, really. Whilst I was there, I also found a Lucky Impling as well. I'm not too sure how rare these are, but uh, just to note if you are going to look for them, they don't appear on the OS Buddy minimap and they're not named. So if you look at all the other Implings, they've all got little names underneath them, so they're easily spotted. But Lucky Implings don't have that yet, so you have to sort of look for them manually. So now we're moving on to Elite Clue Scrolls. Elite Clue Scrolls can be a bit of a pain. Um, using these methods, they normally take between an hour to two hours, um, but they could take like all day in some people's cases. Uh, they may, may get your first kill as well, so it's all down to luck, obviously. Um, Barrows is a 1 in 33 chance. Uh, you just want to take weight reduction gear and speed run it, basically. So you kill the six brothers, then you just run through as quick as you can, loot the chest, take stamina potions if you need them, but you're not looking to kill any of the little monsters. They only affect the chance of stuff like bolt racks, runes, and coins. So yeah, run through as quick as you can, loot the chest, and that's it, repeat. Another really good way of attaining elite clue scrolls are lava dragons. It's a 1 in 125 drop rate. Uh, they've got great secondary loot like lava dragon bones, dragon hide, onyx bolt tips. Uh, they're pretty quick to kill. Um, even if you've got like fire bolt, you can do these. It wouldn't be efficient, but you know, if you want to give it a go, you're more than welcome to. Um, the only problem is, as you can see on screen now, there are a lot of PKs here. I'd even say it's probably the most uh, heavily PK'd part of the wilderness. It's all multi-combat, so if a team comes, you're just going to get absolutely spanked. If you've got um, wilderness hard diaries done, you can use this shortcut. Not many PKs have got this, and you can just hop away to safety. And once they've gone, you can just hop back over. Um, that's what I like to do most of the time rather than changing worlds is just wait until they're gone like for example if a team comes and I log out I'll give it like 10 seconds and log back into the same world normally they've already run away they're not going to sit there and wait for you I'd just like to touch on the high total level worlds as well um, I can get on the 1750 total level world and from what I found from experience is instead of there being less PKs there just seem to be more high level PKs so to be honest I've died more in the uh, high total level worlds than the lower ones
And finally, a little bit of a curveball, it's Zora. If you're efficient at killing Zora, you can average between 20 to 30 kills per hour. So it's a 1 in 75 chance, so you're looking at around 3 hours per elite clue. This doesn't sound as good as Barrows and Lava Dragons, but it's also some of the best loot in game. It's a safe instance, so if you die you can get all your stuff back, and it's also close to the teleport spot. The only downside with Zora really is it's hard to learn, you need to invest a good day or so into doing it, uh, that's why you haven't seen a clip of me doing it, uh, I'm, I, well, to be honest I can't do it, I killed it once, it took me about 30 minutes and I drank pretty much all the brews in RuneScape, so you're not going to see any footage of me doing it, but for those guys that can do it, it's definitely worth it. Now I know what you're thinking, what about Dragon Implings? The problem with Dragon Implings are they're just too expensive. It's a 1 in 50 chance for an elite clue scroll and at the minute they cost about 550k each. So you're looking at between 27.5 to 30 mil just for one elite clue scroll. You know, for the average player, they're not going to be able to afford to do this. The only people that will are maybe streamers who get imps donated to them for free or people that just want to get um, a clue scroll on their release for like a video, something like that. Everyone else, they're just not going to do it. It's not viable. On that note, I'd like to thank you all for watching. The purpose of this guide wasn't to go into massive detail about each individual method. There's plenty of good guides out there for Burrow, Zora and Lava Dragons, etc. Um, I couldn't fit it all in one video, obviously. This guide was just to give you the basic knowledge uh, for the fastest way to get clues in old school RuneScape. I hope you enjoyed and bye.